Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Wednesday Behind the Scenes Live. I'm Angela Wolf, and if you've never been here before, pop in, say hi, say where you're from. You never know your neighbor might be sewing next to you or right now on the mind is fishing. So all my fishing friends that pop in for the first 30 seconds, hi, hope fishing's going well and see you this weekend in Grand Haven. All right, back to the sewing side. So what has been going on this week? If you're on Instagram or you saw my post on Facebook, the sign is up. And uh, I have to laugh because Wynn and I got that sucker in there. <laughs> a little more trimming to do. But um, the sign came with the building, the whole base. But then we just had it remade with my name on it. And everyone said, now everybody's going to show up at your studio. But uh, there is a sign that says taping. This not open to the public, but it's kind of funny. So... We're going to have to start. I won't tell you how many times my ring doorbell went off today, but it was more than twice <laughs> and it wasn't the mailman. So you guys were so right, but that's why I put my website on the bottom. So if you haven't seen it, I'm going to show you that. So today I'm going to talk about a few things. A Linda tunic update on this sew along, how the pattern's coming along. I know that the misses are in the mail now. Booklets are still a little bit out and I did forget it was Memorial Day weekend. So it might be like two days delayed, but two days. That's all right. And let's see what else on that. Uh, an update on the soul. I'm going to be giving you that. Rouge T. Somebody wanted to know how to raise the neckline. Super simple. I'm going to show you a little tutorial on how to do that. And of course, I got to do a show and tell with the Angela of Patterns group because some of you have posted super cute things and Amy posted a really cute dress. So Amy, if you're in here today, I'm going to try to answer your question too because you had something um, that you turn the Delilah into a dress. So, okay. Anyways, how is it going? I'm just going to just lower this just a smidge. I, um, have been working nonstop unpacking boxes. So hopefully I'm not sweating. I don't even care about a bad hair day. I just wanted to come and hang out with you guys. So I see everybody rolling in. There's Jenny. Hey, Jenny, I was going through my phone yesterday and I found the cutest photo of us. And I don't know if I shared it. So if I didn't, I'll be sure to share it and send it to you. It was really cute at the event in Ohio. Uh, thanks, guys. And we got Southwest, Southeast Texas in the house, North Carolina. By the way, um, Jenny in Ohio, there's a ton of you in Ohio. I hope that... You guys are safe. That weather was really scary. It We even were up for a bunch of warnings, but we just have a ton of rain. It's never stopping. So to all my friends that got stuck in that awful storm, we are thinking of you and I hope that you are safe. I saw some of you post online that you were good. So Tracy says she loves my top. Did I dye it? No, this is the Linda tunic. This fabric actually, hold on, I'll go get it. You guys chat for a second. All right, I'm back. So this fabric was, I found it in my stash right before I went to tape it so easy last time. Isn't it great? It's a polyester, which is not usually my fave, but I like it. I did not hand dye it. It came this way, which obviously you know why I chose it because I love crazy fabric like this. And I cut this out using different, you can see how I matched up the lines from my top. Pretty fun, huh? So I will see if I can still find this. I think I got it at Vogue Fabrics or something like that. So, but it's a polyester. It has like a little texture on it. I can't tell so far. I altered this with a button neckline, which is a little different than the Linda tunic, but this is in our sew along with pattern hacks. So thanks. If I can find more of this fabric, I'll let you know. But you know what? Maybe I should just put this online. I think there's just like enough for one, two, one more Linda tunic, probably. I'll let you know. <laughs> but thanks, Tracy, for saying that. Oh, Nancy, everybody's saying they can't wait to get their copy of the pattern. So let's just go ahead with the Linda tunic update. First off, the booklets are in transition. The first set of Mrs. Patterns, of the paper patterns are being sent back. So if you didn't know, all of my patterns come with a booklet. And I'm holding up the Jean one for a couple of reasons. One, these booklets I completely ran out of. Those are being reprinted right now. So if you see on the website, there's only um, PDF pattern for the jeans. That's why. So some of you had messaged me about the jeans pattern. 
I will email you back soon. But these are in print too. But first, the Linda tunic is first. But all the all the patterns come with a spiral bound notebook, nice illustrations, and a nice quality paper pattern. For those of you that don't have that, have never ordered a pattern from me before. But the PDF will be out tomorrow or Friday at the very latest. But tomorrow is the plan to have it all uploaded. I have the misses finished, the directions finished, and I'm just tweaking a little bit on the plus size. So. Um, when the PDF comes out, I will post a note on Facebook. I will send a note in our private groups. You can still use the discount code LINDA20. So that's capital letters, LINDA20 for the PDF. And anyone that ordered the paper version that you're waiting to be shipped next week sometime, uh, towards the end of the week, it'll be shipped. But if you want the PDF in the meantime, all you have to do is go back in your order and leave me a note. Please give me the PDF and I will add it to your order at no charge. So there you go, the PDF. I don't know, it's not gonna be as many pages as you think because I was able to compact the pattern pretty, I made it like super tight. <laughs> and I'm thinking it was maybe 68 inches long by 36. So what is that about? I don't know, however many pages that is. I will post in there how many pages though because it's not like the Evelyn, which it's 240 pieces of paper. My goodness gracious. <laughs> Uh, so, yes. Uh, thanks, Arnell. She said she loves the steps and the directions. Thank you. Did you line your tap? Did you line your top? Joyce says. It looks a little sheer. Um, it is sheer. So hopefully you can't see through it because you just freaked me out. No, I'm not wearing a tank. But when I taped the TV show, I was wearing a tank. So I'll just like sit like this the rest of the day. <laughs> no, it is sheer, though, if you hold it up. And you could wear a cami, anything like that under it. <laughs> you, you just freaked me out there a little bit, Joyce. I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> I ran in here and <laughs> took off my sweaty clothes from working and hauling boxes and unpacking and threw this on. So, woo. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sandy says, did you choose a person to test the extra large for the tunic? Sandy, yes, I did. And that is in our private fashion sewing club group that I am actually, because since that pattern was already tested, it already went to print. I am choosing two lucky winners in the Fashion Sewing Club. So this isn't even, you don't even have to enter to be, if you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, two of the plus sizes will actually get the free pattern. So what's gonna happen is if you place an order and you're one of the lucky winners, and I'm actually choosing two in the plus size and two in the missus size. So if you've ordered a pattern, what's gonna happen is when I go to ship, you are going to get a cute little note that says, thank you for being part of my fashion sewing club and you'll see a refund for your Linda tunic pattern. So I thought that would be a fun way to surprise you. That's just for the fashion sewing club though. So, and I know you're in there, Sandy. And by the way, some of you in the club said that you wanted to test patterns in the future. I've taken all of your names and when the next batch of patterns is ready, I will be contacting you before they go to print. So, and all I'm gonna do is because quite a few of you offered to do that, um, I'm just, I just have a list. I'm going to show you guys the pattern. You say yay or nay, and I'm going to randomly pick a couple of you for each pattern. So, so then there's no preferences, right? Oh, good. <laughs> you, you guys are hilarious. Hi, Gertrude. Great to see you. Oh, good. Okay. I feel better, <laughs> but it was a good point. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> oh, gotcha. When I hold up the fabric. All right. Uh, Terry wants to know, do we have to pay for each of the two size groups? Terry, I don't know if you were one of the people that I emailed this week, but somebody ordered. Hold on, let me find you here. I just, here you go. Somebody ordered the misses and the plus size. You do not need to buy both of those. All you have to do is, um, well, this is how you'd have to order it, though. You'd have to order both of those, and then I will refund because you only have to pay for what, just leave me a note. I only want one booklet with both sizings. And then what I'll do is just take the cost that it costs me to print the extra size and leave out the booklet. So you'll save quite a bit of money if you don't need two patterns. Uh, some people order two patterns because they're giving it to a friend. So I always have to check. I never can assume, right? So if you just uh, leave a note in your order, uh, order if let's just say you want both sides group size groups. Maybe you're making clothes for somebody else or a friend or your mom or somebody. And you say, hey, I'm ordering both of these patterns. Leave a note that says I only need one booklet. And then I will refund the extra and still ship you the extra paper pattern. So I hope that helps. 
And some people have asked if they can just buy the paper pattern and get the digital directions. All you just email me about that. What you'd have to do is purchase the PDF pattern and then email me. And I can have, I can send you just the paper pattern if that's what you want. So I hope that helps answer some questions. <laughs> Sandy, I just saw what you wrote. I'm not going to post it online because I don't want anybody to spit out their coffee, but that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> All right, Jean just got back from fabric shopping. Awesome. Oh, I was so bummed last weekend. I was going to go to Fields Fabric on my way back from up north and then it, the weather was just too icky and we left on Friday to go to the cottage and I didn't get to go fabric shopping. So I'm going through a little bit of withdrawals. I love stopping at Fields in Muskegon and Holland on my way home for Memorial Day. So I missed it. So hopefully in the next couple weeks. Hey, thanks, Rebecca. All right, let's see. I saw a couple other questions before I move on. <laughs> hi, hi, Terry. Great to see you. I love the sleeves. Hi, Lynn. All right, so I think I got the questions on there. So, Amy, I don't know if you're in here. You might be at work, but I'm going to bring a couple things up here for you guys. Let's see. You ready? I'm going to share the desktop. Let me take this down. Just in case you missed this. And then we're going to go do show and tell. And hopefully there's no buzzing. I think I have everything off, so it shouldn't buzz. If it does, just let me know. But there is officially the new sign. Is that awesome or what? So some of you asked me, did I use the scan and cut? Oh, you are here, Amy. Yay. Okay, I'll go on to you next in case you got to run. Um, by the way, love your top, which we'll get to that in a second. But here's the sign. So when he, he got it all in, I, I could have done it with the scan and cut. Yes, but did I? No. I actually went to my dear friend, Scott, over at Art and Image, who has been doing signs as long as I've been designing clothes. And he had this beautiful metallic silver. I, I didn't want, the sign is actually a light up sign. I didn't want it to light up because there's no purpose for that for me. I wanted it to be black and silver, just like my logo and my label, just like everything. Then there's a website. So if you were actually wondering what's going on in that building, you could just look up the website. So when we put those in he did such a good job and someone said why didn't you use your scan and cut and you know what i love my scan and cut in fact i've been i'm working on a new project for a, the blog for brother which you guys are going to love not coming for a couple weeks but if i did that mine would be like this angelo wolf <laughs> and if i got the one side right the next side probably wouldn't be so much so i would need my whole group of sewing friends cindy Hogan would definitely have to be in that group over here well her and joanne and the whole brother crew are coming here uh just in two weeks maybe we could have all done it together but i wanted to sign up before we had the big brother meeting so <laughs> oh thanks guys you're saying that you love it. Yeah, I was pretty I was pretty excited. It was kind of like one of those moments where, you know, I bought the building in August. And yes, I've been working out of here nonstop. As you know, um, eventually I will be teaching classes here when my travel schedule slows down a little bit. But I needed to get things organized first. So when the sign goes up, it's kind of like one of those things where you pinch yourself and go, oh, gosh, I really did buy that building. That's one of those wowzer moments. So there's my little touch of pride for the week, and that is my sign. Do I have to have a sign? Heck no, but why not, right? <laughs> you only live once. All right. All right, let's see. I got more to show you on here. Judy, what did you say? I want the PDF and the fabric you have on. It took me two years to find the snakeskin, but I did, and I love the top. Oh, my gosh, I forgot about that snakeskin. That we, I thought I had a ton left. I couldn't find it, and you did find it, which was good. All right, hold on a second. Wynn looks pretty proud too. Yeah, he's like the best ever. All right, let me just, let's bring Amy's top up here. Hold on one moment. Oh, and don't forget we have a giveaway today and that is the DIY style 24 inch ruler. I will be doing the random drawing for that this afternoon. So uh, not this afternoon, but right after, right out at the end of the show. Let me just find Amy's top. So Amy, has been you post the cutest photos by the way many of you do but amy the last couple ones i just love um your poses on there so let me just find this 
Are you going live today? Bonnie says, yes, I am. So let me just get to the picture. I'm bringing this up and I need your help on this, Amy, because I didn't quite understand what you were talking about. So Amy, there's the Delilah pattern. She turned it into a dress. Wait till you see how cute this is. I love this. And I couldn't tell. She said she did shearing at the waist, but I, and you had a question on that. So maybe you can help me, but this is so cute. And is that the countertop your husband just put in because Good job. <laughs> That's what I got to say about that. But I love the fabric. Absolutely love the fabric. And I mean, that is the cutest dress ever. So in case you guys missed the picture, it's in the Angela Wolf Patterns group. This is the Delilah pattern. It's a super easy pattern. It is awesome for beginners, but she turned this into something way, way, way even cuter. So Amy, help me out here. Did you um, add ruching as far as the elastic that you would add, um, like I've done with a serger, something like that, where it's shearing all the way around with the elastic thread, or did you use it in a serger or I'm just curious because that is super cute. And I also have a question on the fabric because a couple people asked what fabric it is. The says that dress is adorable. Oh gosh. Yes. Yes. Darling dress. This one was, oh, it is the new countertop. Well, your husband gets an A plus on that. Super A plus. All right. So did you use a sewing machine or serger to put in the shearing? And I'm assuming the shearing used elastic thread, but I'm not, I'm, you know what happens when you assume. So I'm just curious. What did you use? Here we go. Let's see. She put a close up picture of the waist and explanation of what she did under my comment. All right. Let me find your comment under here. Oh gosh, there's lots of comments in here. You got 62 comments on that. They're loving this one. All right, hold on a second. Where's the photo? <laughs> That's a, oh, where is it? Okay, it's in here somewhere, you said. Amy says, I sewed six rows of shearing with elastic thread in the bobbin and then ironed it. Awesome. Okay, did I'm looking for your photo. If you posted another photo in here, maybe I see Barbara Schiller was in there. I don't see the other photo. So, um, if you tell me where that is, I'll find it. Then steam from the iron gathered it together. Okay. Awesome. Love the dress and the fabric. All right, Amy, six rows of shearing in the elastic bobbin. So I know that you asked a question on here. Do you mind share? You said, Angela, do you mind sharing some sharing tips on a call? Yeah. So if you want to call in, you can call in too. <laughs> I'd love you to. Um, but I have a question on the fabric. So Amy, are you free? Because if you um, message me your phone number, I'll call you. If you want me to call you on live, I'd be more than happy to because we'd love to hear from you. There are 10 hidden comments at the top. All right. Let me look. Oh, you're right. You're Janet, you are good and on top of it. So let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's the, oh, that's so cute. You did a great job on that, Amy. I'm just checking to see if you message me because it'll come on a different screen. That is a great job. So Amy, what fabric is that? It almost looks like a sweater like sweater fabric. It looks super soft. That's probably why it looks so stylish. And six rows of shearing. All right, Amy, so I'm going to call your number and then I'll delete your phone number off the screen. So hold on a second, guys. Let's call Amy. Bunch of crazy boyfriends. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Amy. Hi. I did get the right number. I've got your number saved now. <laughs> All right. How are you doing? I am good. How is everybody? Everyone say hi to Amy. So, okay, this dress is so cute. First thing, like in the morning, I always scroll through to see photos and I'm like, I had to put my glasses on that. I'm like, this is so cute. Oh, thank you. It was fun too. I could visualize what I wanted to do in my head. So it was fun to try to figure out how to make it happen. Okay, that, that dress looks doesn't even look like the Delilah pattern. The fabric looks so soft. So first, what fabric did you pick? Okay, so it is a a lighter weight, um, like a cotton. I am not good with fabrics. It's like a cotton, but it's sheer, so I have to wear um, a black slip underneath it because you can probably see through it. 
Okay. Well, we can't so, see through it here, so it looks great here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with the Delilah pattern, I put it out on the fabric, like you can see in the picture. But to do what I wanted to do, I had to cut in the armhole a little bit narrower than what the pattern is. Okay. And then I figured out where my where my waist is. So you can see some dotted lines on the on the fabric paper where my waist is. And then I came out about two inches from the paper on the pattern. Okay. Because I knew how much shearing I wanted to do and I knew how wide it needed to be to get the shearing in. Okay. To do it. And then I just cut straight down for the rest of the, the dress. So you didn't angle out at all, it just cut straight down. Yeah. That's why it looks so cute. Because remember when um, I tried to do the Delilah, the first one where I extended it out a little bit and it looked more like a pirate outfit. And then I had to ended up taking it in, <laughs> which was, Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> this is very cute. And you did such Thanks. a good job lining up your pattern. So those of you that aren't noticing, look at where her hem is. It's on the same part of the lines going across. That's the easiest way to line up your pattern like that. But you did a great job on the sewing too, though. It looks Thank fantastic. You. So my question about shearing was that was the first time I'd ever done it. And the brother machine, the first time I practiced with it, the brother machine doesn't really like it. So I had to figure out where you put the elastic in your bobbin, but you have to take the plastic piece off the bobbin case and like wind it in there a little bit different. So I don't know, since you're a brother ambassador, if you had any experience with that or any tips or any ways to make it prettier or easier. Oh, that's a great question. Hey, Joanne is in here, Joanne Banco. So hey, Joanne, if if you heard that, there's one thing that I was going to ask you since Joanne is here. She does a lot of um, bobbin work. So if you have any tips on the bobbin work, Joanne, pop in. So when I do the shearing, I actually, I have not done it in a sewing machine for so long. And I did it in one of my old machines, like way old. And I actually okay. saved that machine because... That's the only thing that machine did good. It, it had the worst <laughs> stitches ever. I won't even tell you guys what machine it is. It was not a brother, but oh, um, no. it was the worst machine ever, but it did the best shearing. And there was two settings on the side because it was not electronic and it was easy and fast. I've saved the machine <laughs> just for that. But, you know, I always use the cover stitch now, so I don't um, okay. use the sewing machine. But you know what? This is really going to be a good topic. And I'm going to do some research for you because I know that uh, what brother machine do you have? I have the SC425. Okay. Oh, that's a great Nothing machine. Nothing fancy, but it's a workhorse. I love it. Yeah, that is a great machine. So I'll do some research to find out if you're supposed to change bobbin cases and things like that on there. Um, it looks really good. on. Did you use a straight Thanks. stitch or a zigzag? I use a straight stitch. Okay. And uh, I just continuously did like six rows around. It was kind of hard because the skirt was getting all bunched up in the sewing machine. So you have to be really careful and hold all your fabric aside so it doesn't get sewed up in, in there. Oh, that's but, uh, always the worst but I part. I it. I think it came out so good. I cannot wait to wear it. Oh my gosh, I want one of these. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this. So um, Gertrude has a question. Um, great dress. She says, Hi, Amy. Thanks. How far apart are the rows of shearing? They are about the width of um, your sewing foot. Okay. That's all I did. Because it was an easy way for me to gauge to keep them straight. And you know, that's funny. That's whenever I do, when I have done that on the sewing machine for all those years, I would always do the same thing. I would use my foot as a guide because it just makes it simple. You're just, you know, you can mm -hmm. use your foot as a guide to keep. But when you do more than, if you did six rows, you must have had just a hot as Carter would say, hot mess. <laughs> it was a hot mess. Because <laughs> all the fabric gathered. I was gathered. telling you that I wouldn't have a hot mess. But it's so cool. Once you finish sewing them all and you go to the iron and you do, like, you don't press it down, but you just kind of lightly hold the iron over and hit the steam button, and it all just kind of shrinks up. And I don't know if that's as weird for me to say, but I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> that looks great. So you got a few more. Hey, Jenny's uh, off to work, and she says, Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Bye, Jenny. Have fun at work. But um, hold on here. Susan had a question for you. Susan says, great to hear voices since she was on here last week. Uh, Susan Fisher says, did you shear the front and back before stitching the side seam or stitch the side seams first and then shear? Nope. I stitched the side seams first and then sheared so I could just do like continuous rows yeah. and not have to start and stop. That's what I would have done too because yeah. it just makes it easier. Now, um, when I'm on the cover stitch, I will actually uh, go back and tie the beginning and tie the end, uh, or I will take it to the sewing machine and do a quick zigzag stitch over each end to make sure the elastic doesn't pull out. Did you have to do anything oh. like that? Um, no, I just did a back stitch, but I think that that's a good idea if I should go back and do a zigzag stitch to secure it. 
Yeah. Uh, well, back stitch okay. would do it too. That's a good idea. Just something to secure it. So then all of a sudden through time, all of a sudden you're not missing part of your elastic. <laughs> okay. I know because it looks like it would easily unravel if given the opportunity. Yeah. So, so. An, uh, another question for you, because somebody was just talking about this and I don't think it was you last week, but somebody else was talking about cheering um, with steam. So you mentioned that you steamed it. Yes. With the iron. Did that bring everything Tell us exactly what that did before I. So when you're sewing it like that, it'll start gathering it just a little bit and you, you'll you be able to start seeing what it's going to do. But once you're finished and you go to the iron um, and you steam it, it like sucks it all in even tighter. Okay. Cause so like when you see, when you see tube shirts that have the shearing around it or skirts that have the, the waist around it, that's what it does. It like, it just shrinks it all up. Well, you know, I'm going to try that because I have not, I mean, I always press it and I always steam press everything, but I never paid attention to see what would happen. Like I've done this uh, shearing uh, bathing suit cover up that I did. And I, I have a blog post coming out in a couple of weeks on that. That's oh, all cool. sheared. Now, this is something that I made a few years ago and I'm just redoing it for modern, but I used it on silk. So a very light fabric, even lighter than what you're doing. And mm -hmm before I pressed it, the bottom of the fabric is really tight where the shearing was. And then it kind of pooched out, which was not very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up doing like eight more rows of shearing. So the shearing went all the way from the waist to the hip, which was very cute. But I'll bet you if I would have steam pressed it, it would have solved that problem. So that was a great Maybe. tip. Yeah. All right. Well, let me I appreciate everyone's comments and, and compliments on Facebook. Yes, everybody's everyone's so a, sweet. Everybody's saying hi. Chris says hi. And Chris finally remembered <laughs> to plug in. I know, Chris, it's hard with the retired life. <laughs> and uh, Joanne Banco said she's going to look up some instructions and okay. post on here for you, too. Although Wonderful. I think you got, not to put you on the spot, but a few more people are saying hi and have a question for you. Okay. Uh, Cynthia Gorey says, nice job, Amy. Since the Delilah pattern is made for knit fabrics, did you have to add some ease to the pattern to make it fit on a woven fabric? Um, I did, but it was mostly just ease to make sure I had enough to gather in the waist. That sounds perfect. That's and then, well, I guess the other thing I probably could have done is um, I wanted my sleeves to be a little bit longer. So, but I cut them true to the pattern and they were tight around my arms. So that's why I ended up with the shorter sleeves. Gotcha. So okay. that would fit. So that would be the one thing I would do is with a woven bigger, cut your sleeves a little bit wider. Yeah, because Cynthia also, if, when she mentioned that she added some to the waist and then cut straight out, they gave her enough ease. Basically, the only ease you would need besides the sleeve is to be able to get it over your head. That's the main thing. And then, right. and so you can walk. That's another. <laughs> 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 All right. So Pam wants to know, did you just start cheering or did you um, plan on like what your, the final size that you wanted? Did, or did you just go for it to see what happens? Um, I planned on the final size that I wanted. Uh, I had watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how, like, how to do it and how to measure, and it was saying um, you want like one and a half times the width of what you normally would want to, because it'll shear down to to what would fit you. Perfect. So I did, I did like a one mock trial with another cotton fabric just to test how wide I should have it for for me to fit. You know, that's so. a, a great idea to take a swatch of fabric, even in some of the tutorials that I've done with the cover stitch machine, which that's on YouTube somewhere. Um, I always take a scrap of fabric the same way you're talking about and see if you measure. So let's just say, I'm going to use my hands here for a sec. If you're, for those of you watching, if let's just say you have four inches of fabric here, or I would start with probably 12 inches and leave one piece that's 12 inches and then go back and shear another piece that's 12 inches. And if you line them up next to each other, you'll know exactly how much you're shearing because it depends on your stitch length and your fabric. And if you're using yeah. zigzag versus straight stitch and things like that. So that's true. That's a great tip though, to start with that fabric. But when I bought the stock and I bought it at Fields, um, I, had a, I had a vision of what I wanted the dress to look like. And the Delilah pattern, at least the top of it, was perfect for what I was trying to do. So if you don't have the Delilah pattern, ladies, you should invest in it because it is so nice Thanks. and versatile. Thank you. Thank I you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even pay her for that. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Well, that's super cute. Wait a minute. So you got the fabric at Fields? The one, the store that I missed this week? <laughs> yes, the store you missed this week. <laughs> oh, gosh. I forgot. Do you go to the one in Grand Rapids mostly? Um, I either go to the one in Grand 
he, Spring Lake area or Holland. It depends on where I am for work. Oh, see, one of these days I'm going to, now that I have your phone number, I'm going to have to message you because I love both of those. The one in Spring okay. Lake and the one, I always say Muskegon, but that's yeah. Spring Lake. And then the one in um, Holland. I think they're both my absolute, I get in a lot of trouble there though. <laughs> I do too. It's like the hundred dollar store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Amy, thank you so much for, for uh, letting us call you and ask questions about You're this. Welcome. Everyone is saying that they love the top and Thanks. I love all the photos that you do. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Good take day. care. All right. I love it when I find a friend that goes to the same fabric store that I go to. How fun would that be? Although then uh, we both would get in trouble. It's worse when you have somebody in the fabric store with you because then you both get into trouble. But Amy, you are awesome. Love your tops. Very cute. So let me just um, take this down for a sec because that was, if you have, if you're in the Angela Wolf Patterns group, which is free to join, anybody could join. Uh, you just have to answer why you want to be in the group. So then we know that you actually want to sew Angela Wolf Patterns and hang out with us. But I just... Um, there was a few more things in here. There were a couple photos. Terry, love your photos. I think those were for uh, some kids. I won't put the kids on there, but uh, great photos. I love what you're working working with. And we have some lace going on. So by the way, I'm so inspired by so many of you making these lace items, which is awesome. So a couple of things that we're still working on. Oh, I recognize that fabric. Let me bring this up. I have a giveaway today for the 24 inch ruler for DIY style, which I'll bring over here. And next week, so for the next, uh, there's gonna be a two week span of another contest and that is going to be the entire season, 17 of It's So Easy. Yay. So I know you can watch the episodes right now on YouTube. My episodes are going to be on YouTube, but I'm doing it as a watch party so you can ask questions. So, but you can enter to win this, which was awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Catherine, for sending this for all of our guests. And so this giveaway will be up on Friday. I will post a note in the group so you can't miss it. But I'm also doing other giveaways, random giveaways for the entire month of June. It will start in June. And as you know, I have a few cool trinkets now. And so what some of the things I'll be giving away is like my thread cutter and my thread cutter side mount that can go on a serger or sewing machine. So I've asked you guys, it's not June yet, so don't worry, but I've asked you guys, post a photo somewhere on the internet. If it's in the Angela of Patterns group, if it's on Instagram, you have to tag me at Angela Wolf Fashion, or if it's on Twitter, you tag me. I think on there, I'm Angela underscore Wolf. When I started all the social media, some of the Angela Wolves were taken and I should have kept them all the same, but uh, I have to make you try a little bit, right? So this, I love this picture. This was from Maggie. And so there's how she watches behind the scenes. It could be behind the scenes. It could be PBS, whatever, but I'm going for her behind the scenes. And I see she's using her new cover stitch machine and I recognize that fabric. She's got her notepad out. So neat and clean. I love it. So there was a few more cute photos that you guys have to see. Let's see if I could just bring this. Hold on a sec. <laughs> All right, Susan, I have to tell you, you really made me laugh on this one. A walker for retired fishermen. So all my fishing friends, <laughs> here we go. There's hope for us. <laughs> that was absolutely hilarious. So I'm going to have to definitely share that. All right, let's see. I got, here's another photo. This is Marie. Whoa, you got me on the big screen TV and look at your sewing area. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I love the color of your walls too. So that is her sewing area and that's how she watches behind the scenes. Very fun. And I think there were a few more that I didn't show last week. <laughs> okay, so I, do, I try not to post photos of little kids in my live show, but if you're in the group, you gotta go see this little one with the little fish. Tilly posted that. Oh my gosh, precious, precious, precious. All right, Mary Wyatt. Oh, look at this. Somebody wanted some ideas on storing fabric and patterns. So Mary, you are very organized. Look at these bins up here with all the patterns. She's got more bins with fabric, magazines, a bin for everything. And you, all, of course, all your thread. So 
Somebody asked me the other day, they said, hey, when you've got thread all over your wall like you do, it's going to get dusty. So why do you do that? And I say, well, because I've got a can of air that I just spray out every once in a while. And plus, it's pretty. I like it. And if it's in a bin, I'm not going to find it. I'm telling you, if I put, I have a lot of embroidery thread in bins, a lot of denim thread, anything that's hairy, well, let's see, more fuzzy, fuzzier, something like that. I put those in bins, but they're in drawers that pull out. But, you know, if I don't have my colors on the wall, it just makes me happy. Okay, so Joanne says, let's see here, Joanne, what do you have to say? Okay, here's one brother tutorial. I know you're covering up my face, but it's okay. Okay, so she posted something about um, a giveaway, or not a giveaway, a demo for elastic thread smocking that she did on a brother machine. So there you go. <laughs> Susan, that was way too good. <laughs> All right. Hi, Jackie. Great to see you, Pam. Ed, Crystal, a lot of people rolling in today. <laughs> Love, not live. That's all right, Ann. We got you. No worries. <laughs> and then Angie, hot kiss. How's it going? All right. I got a couple more things in here and then I'm going to do the giveaway for you. And I want to do the rouge tea. So let me just see. Oh, there's a little, there's a discussion in our group on the Craftsy Blueprint, for those of you that missed that. Try to be positive. We all have to try to be positive. You know what? There's always good things that come out of everything. Most of the time. But some of you had asked questions because I guess there's a lot of stuff going around online about instructors not knowing that there was questions there and blah, blah, blah. If you would like to see my blurb that I put out last Sunday, I went, I was at the cottage. I posted a note that I was going to go live to you guys to answer your questions and just try to put some ease, let you know what's going on, but it's in the private group. So Angela of Patterns Group, feel free to pop in there, leave comments. You can always message me if you have questions, but uh, many of you said, are your classes still going to be there that you paid for? It? From what I know, yes. So that's all I know. For those of you that are on the membership, are you going to get your an questions answered? That's, I guess that's where the whole question is. If we don't know about it, how are we going to answer you? So go in there. It's uh, some useful information. <laughs> I rambled on way longer than I planned as always. So it was like an hour. So all you need to do is watch like the first 10 minutes and then you're good. All right. So let's see one more thing here. And then I'm going to go. Here it is. Denise. I love this. And I, I'm going to bring this up and then we're going to talk about the rouge tea pattern because that is what she's wearing. So Denise, oh my gosh, I love this. And I, I shared your stuff on Instagram. So you guys, if you're sharing your photos and you tag me, if you don't want me to share them, just let me know. But so far, everybody loves it. So just know, don't be afraid to post something. If you don't want it shared, just leave a note. But Denise, you are rocking this top. That's all I can say. You look fabulous and the colors are great. So this is the rouge tea. See if I can bring you, there you go. And the pink, I love. It looks like she did the twisted neckline there and the yellow just standard. So you look amazing. So the question came up about the Rouge T. What if you want a higher neckline? I think it was Debbie that posted that. So Debbie, here is your tutorial for the day. And I'll show it to all of you. Make sure you can see okay and I don't lose you when I turn the camera down. All right, you ready? can see heads up thumbs up making sure that nothing crazy happens on here okay great everybody's saying they love your colors Denise so I know they can see you so all right Debbie Schimmel had the question what happens if you want to raise the neckline so this is your rouge tee it looks like any t-shirt basically the front it just may be different body shape right if you want this oh that's pretty small you want that bigger all right let's try that again how's that better <laughs> okay definitely so if you want this higher what you do is you take your ruler and make a line parallel to this line. So it has to be the exact same 
as this is where you would have your fold of fabric, right? You got that? And then mark up. Well, usually you have two, two options. If you already know where the top is going and you would need to mark how much higher you want the neckline. So if you know that, then you measure from here up. If you don't know that measurement, you measure from your neck to where you want your collar to go and compare that to the pattern. But what I would do is probably, you've probably already worn the pattern and you know how much higher you want it. So let's just say you wanted it two inches higher. All right. And then you're going to mark two inches. And when this part of the collar, I already have that very tight to the neckline. I did that on purpose. So it's lower and it comes and wraps around your neckline. So I wouldn't touch anything in this area. I would start here and just ease it into that seam. So then you don't have to worry about doing anything about the shoulder, anything about the sleeves. The only other thing you're gonna have to change is the binding. So let me bring you back up here very slowly so I don't lose you. But you know when I do that, I, you know I'm gonna unplug something. All right, does that make sense? So either you can measure, if you know that the top goes to here and you want it higher, you can just measure. I want it up two inches. And speaking of top, I'm gonna talk about the Linda tunic, a couple things that we're gonna be talking about that opening on the top. So what I would do then is once you have your neckline as high as you want it, don't forget you have a binding. So the binding will add about a half of an inch, not even that much. Well, it depends which collar you're choosing. So let's just say that you're going to make your own binding. You take a two inch wide piece of fabric, fold it in half and use a half inch seam allowance. You'll have a half of an inch that, that adds, that shows up there. But you also have a half of an inch seam allowance. So if you do it that way, wherever you end up cutting it, that's where the height is going to be. Then you'll have to measure around your entire neckline take away one to two inches, depending on your fabric, and make a new binding. That's the only thing you have to do that's different. So you've seen me wear, oh gosh, a gazillion of the Rouge tee. That's like my, I use it for almost every top on the base. Now I use my that and my Delilah and things like that. So you can do any neckline height you want to. Have fun with that. I will pop into the group and see if you have questions on that, but that's pretty easy. Can you just do Okay, Marcy says, can you just turn it and do a cover stitch on the neckline? Absolutely. And I actually probably have a tutorial. I'm sure I have a tutorial on that somewhere. Oh, I have it in the knits class, I think. And I think you're in there. Um, in the knits class, I show you how, because on my tank tops, I can't stand. Well, sometimes I don't like to have the binding. I just want an easy tank top that tucks in, which is what I was wearing before I came on the show. And there's a technique that I use for that to make it fast and easy. The Knits class is at academy.angelawolf.com for those of you that don't know that. And if you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, which is also at the same website, uh, pop in the sewing, Fashion Sewing Club because there's a discount to that class. <laughs> I'm looking at your comments. Every fabric store is a $100 store. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> All right, let's see what else. Uh, Darlene says, thanks for the info. Angie said she raised her neckline on the Rouge T too. So, you know, the neckline is such an easy thing to change and the Rouge T came with three necklines. So if you're going to use that really tall one, you're not going to want to raise it up too much, but I've done that. And then I end up with like a huge high collar for winter, which is great, which at this rate, <laughs> I might be in winter all summer. It's the end of May and I'm it's freezing outside. Well, freezing in my standards. All right, let's see what you got to say. And then... I don't know if Debbie, oh, there's Debbie. Hey, Debbie. So if you need more on that tutorial, Debbie, just let me know. But it's pretty easy. And you've been sewing a long time. So I know you're going to catch that super, super quick and super easy. I think, how long have I known you, Debbie? Uh, let's see. I think I met you for the first time on Pattern Review years ago in one of my classes. So that's a long time ago. So it's great to still see you on Facebook. <laughs> Cindy. War. <laughs> oh gosh, you guys are hilarious. All right, so um, let's see. I have a giveaway for you. Hold on. Let me find it. Whoop, that thought, and I'm going to give you something about the Linda tunic. Here you go. Am I here? Did it freeze? I'm back. 
Mary Lou, hello from sunny Long Beach. I'm so jealous. All right, guys, you back? I see that it's frozen. Let me just um, bring this down. Maybe that'll help. Are you there? Okay. Sorry. Just making sure that I didn't lose you. Here is the 24 inch ruler with the magnets. So how many of you guys have the DIY style mat? It's awesome. So I have two of them put together and I'm, I really like this shorter ruler. If you're on Instagram, you saw me use this. I was using it for a hem. It was easier to lift than the big long ruler. So the big long ruler I was using to line up the grain line and then this. So let me just open the page. I see you guys said I froze and now I'm okay now. So hold on one moment. Let me find, I just lost it. Hold on a second. I have to open the software to see, to do the drawing for who won. While I'm doing that, uh, I'm going to, it'll just take a minute for it to come up. Gotta love internet these days. It takes forever. Darlene says, not yet, but I'm saving for it. <laughs> oh, Rebecca has them and she has the 24 inch ruler. Loves them all. I know, Barbara. Always something that we need. <laughs> Mary Lou, you have two too? Yeah, well, if you're gonna do garments, you almost have to have two. So it it, you know. I think uh, I know a few of you like Susan and that group. You guys have four. All right, let's just, I think I need one. So I do have a link that I gave you guys. Uh, you have both rulers too. So a lot of you guys got both rulers, which is great. So um, I have a link for you guys. And as soon as I talk to Cindy, if there's another discount or giveaway, I will make sure you guys know right away because she's always generous with us on that, her and Alice, so, uh, which is awesome. And Angela says she doesn't have either. Where do you get those rulers? Here you. It's, um, there's a link that I have for you in there for DIY style. This goes with the mat. So very cool. And the mat is magnetic. I'll bring you guys over there on my cell phone next time we're here, but on, from here you can't see it. Judy says, I don't have one yet. Where do you get those rulers? I'll leave you guys a link, all right, Mary? Okay, so here's the contest. Let me look this up. Somewhere. <laughs> All right, it's loading. While it is loading, and we're going to draw a random winner. So about the Linda tunic, this is the Linda tunic. The buttons are one of the pattern hacks. So. The sew along is going to start right after the pattern ships. And that's when we're going to start watching the videos together. And I'm adding a few things in there. So a couple of things. And thanks to Janet for this one. She said uh, the collar for one of these, maybe she wanted it higher, which was great feedback because the thing is, is, well, maybe you want a higher neckline. You just have to basically get this over your head. So I actually stopped the press on the paper pattern and added an entire page. So you can thank our dearly friend Janet for that and added an entire page on how to adjust for a higher or lower collar. So that being said, I'm going to make sure that I have a live video during, before we cut the fabric out to walk you through that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, I have the calendar up. So let me tell you when to expect everything for that. And then we're gonna do the giveaway. I can see some of you guys asking, I don't have them yet. Thank you for the link. Darlene says, <laughs> oh, Susan, I'm so jealous. And Cindy, thank you for loving my shirt like that. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Okay, so hold on a sec. Let me see. There was a sale, you know, that uh, they had that was if you got into this, it was a sale and I think that's over with now. It ended yesterday, but let me just see. 
Why are these not working? Hmm. I can put it back up for you. But I think the, the discount is over with though right now. So if you guys want to her to do another one, I will try to ask her. But um, I know it'll probably be just a few weeks before she can do that. So which it's worth it when you can do that. Uh, can I make my Linda top out of a knit? Debbie, yes, you can. You sure can. In fact, some of the knits would be gorgeous out of this. ITY knits and stuff. All right. So today is, let me make sure I'm in the right month. Okay. So mark your calendar for a few things. One, on June 12th at 12 o'clock is going. So next week we have our usual Facebook live, but June 12th is a live our live show is going to be a little bit earlier it's going to be at 12 o'clock and it's going to include all of the brother ambassadors that are going to be coming here so they're all coming here brother their marketing team everybody's coming here we're doing a, a fun training uh, a lot of fun with photographs i'm looking so forward to it so they're all going to come live so you can meet them say hi in person here in my studio on the 12th all right, let me hide that comment here. So that is June 12th. Right after, now all the patterns will be shipping out, assuming they're all here. You know, you got to give a little leeway, but all the patterns should be shipped out of here by June 10th at the latest. If anything happens, I'll let you know. I think I put on the thing that the approximate date of uh, shipping was the 5th, or arrival here is the 5th. And then we got to stuff them real quick and then send them out. So hopefully by the 10th at the latest, all of those are shipped out. That will means everybody will have their patterns, the ones that have the paper one by the 14th. Now, before that, though, I want to start the sew along so you can get ideas for fabric and I can answer those questions before we decide to start cutting and sewing. I think that's more knowledgeable than cutting it and then trying to solve, right? Would you agree? I hope so. <laughs> if not, well, then you can skip ahead till later. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So I have written down here, June. Let's see here. June 4th. June 4th is going to be, I think that's what I should put my darn glasses on. <laughs> it's so small. All right, so what I have here, let me make sure I've got all the calendars brought up. I've got three calendars that all kind of go over each other. All right. So for next week, a couple of things happening on the 4th of June, which is Tuesday, that will be the first watch party on YouTube. I will leave a link for you guys here so you won't miss it. No worries. But the watch party means that if you're free that evening, you can watch YouTube the It's So Easy YouTube, The it's the first episode that talks about fabric and all those, and I will be watching at the same time, so we're kind of live. And then on Wednesday, the 5th, I will be discussing that video. There will be another video for you to watch. You're going to be very busy next week if you're bored, okay? If you're not bored, you can catch up later. But next Wednesday for the live show, I'll be answering more questions about the Linda tunic and talking about fitting and choosing the right size and things like that. So for those of you that decide to get the PDF pattern right away, before you start cutting, you might want to wait till next week for these special things. So that's June 4th. There'll be a YouTube video that actually, I don't know what time it is, but I'll leave a post here so you can't miss it. It's going to be a watch party. And then I will, on the 5th, talk about 1.30, our usual time to hang out together. And it's on the 6th, on June 6th, is the Fashion Sewing Club. Those of you in the Fashion Sewing Club, we have a live q a at noon if you're not in the fashion sewing club you might want to start a free trial because then you could join us and then by then hopefully by the beginning of the week i'll have the rest of the schedule finished and sent to you guys i just have a few iffy travel things that i have to work around so other than that you can mark your calendar for next week the fourth fifth and sixth i got a lot of fun things for you guys so i'm ordering my linda today thanks chris don't forget about your discount, Chris. And then, uh, let's see, are you offering a discount on the tunic? Oh, yes, Anne, always. So the the, the pre-order and this coupon code is good until June 10th. Because June 10th, everything will be shipped and the coupon code goes away. And this is the coupon code. 
And you can get this at angelawolfpatterns.com. The PDF file will be out by Friday. That's in two days. And you can also use the discount code for that. If any of you purchase, which um, I'm just going to say a lot of you are going to be making the Linda pattern. Win about died when he saw the stack of orders. So I had to actually order more envelopes. So good thing you let me know so I can like prep for this, <laughs> which I'm so glad you're excited to sew this. So thank you, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. And Glenda, the Linda, the PDF it will be up on Friday. And anybody that ordered the paper that wants the PDF, send me a note. All right. There's the discount. Now, if you're in the fashion sewing club, hop in there. Your discount's different. As you know, there's perks to being in that club. All right, time to go to my mand mandolin lesson. Mandolian lesson. Joyce, that's awesome. Actually, I got to go too. So let me um, do this drawing. I think it should be loaded by now. That was a lot of stuff to remember, right? <laughs> so Friday, PDF pattern will be up. Friday, this contest link will be up for It's So Easy. Season 17, speaking of It's So Easy, Cindy was on here. Joanne was on here. Thanks, guys, for joining me today. All right. And then next week, we've got a whole pile of things. I love summer. Lots of sewing to do. All right, let's draw a winner. So this is the magnetic mat. Well, not the mat. Uh, if I was giving away a magnetic mat, Cindy... Alice, if you're watching, don't fall off your chair. No, <laughs> I'm giving away. They are giving away the 24-inch ruler with the magnet. Now, if you haven't seen these magnets, these things are awesome. They all stick together, and they go right to the mat. Super awesome. All right, I'm drawing one winner. You got extra entries for any friends that you brought to the party. And this winner is in Ohio. All right, Margaret Miller. Congratulations. And she said she already gets my newsletter, so no worries on that. <laughs> and Margaret, congratulations. So I will, if you could message me, message me your address. I will forward it to DIY, the DIY girls. And if not, I will email you tomorrow because I'm out of here for the day. I got a ton of errands to run. I'm going to put my dirty clothes back on. You guys have a great week. It's so much fun hanging out with you. Thank you for always coming back every week to say hi. If there's ever a topic you want me to cover, you can always send me a note. I try to make it fun and entertaining for as fast as I can without talking too fast. How's that? <laughs> and to my friends overseas, great to see you. And I will make sure that I have a contest for you with the Linda Tunic that's a PDF so you don't have to worry about shipping. So Sandy says, Ohio, yay. So you guys have a great week. I will see you. Well, I will probably be popping into the group on Friday or something like that to remind you that the PDF is ready and let you give you an update on the whole schedule. So Angela of Patterns group is free. You, if you'd like to join, you just go over there and visit. And as long as you leave a good comment of why you want to join, we'll let you in. <laughs> All right. Bye, you guys. Bye, Clovis. You guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.